friends welcome back this is yet another a uh, video and session on deep learning topic uh, we have learned something about rnn i have taught you that very nicely i explained you how exactly lstm works we have gone through step by step process in learning all those but i did not explain you something called as simple rnn yes there is something called as simple rnn it really is very simple as the name says it all but there are some flaws related to it that i'll also tell you at the time i complete this topic till then let's maintain the suspense let's go ahead and construct a very simple rnn based stuff here which is going to be very useful for us we are going to import pandas we are going to import numpy matplotlib and from the keras models as usual we are going to go with sequential and most importantly we have dense and simple rnn imported here till now we would not have imported something called a simple rnn this is the first time you could see that we have imported something called as simple rnn now what do we do the next step is very important we are going to have one very important learning here the learning is very simple how with time series we are going to generate a very simple set of data i am going to generate a time series data but in a very simple way and importantly why do we need to learn this you people need not break your head towards generation of the data instead follow this approach towards generating data in time series and it's very easy approach to do what do i do here i have got n equal to 1000 tp equal to 800 and t equal to np dot a range and 0 to n is given the next step is where we get the sinusoidal content coming into picture just remember that formula follow it up and it will help you in generating the data as you want and the next step is to get the data frames created and that's what we have done we have displayed the first five data entries from the data frame using head and you can see that the data is all created in a very simple fashion yet it is a very easier way to do it you need not break your head towards getting the data generated or data created or to be downloaded you can create your own data now what do we do the next step we are displaying it with plt dot plot of tf and show is done that shows that it is a sinusoidal wave because we have used the sinusoidal functions right on the top the next thing is very simple where you can see that we are assigning df dot values to values and there we need to split the training and the testing you can see that the first thing values of a zero comma tp comma a zero is to tp comma colon and followed by values of tp is to n comma colon is also there now in that case the first half is representing zero as the start tp as 800 and this is for your training and the second case the capital n represents 1000 that's it so we now understand that there are overall 1000 content available 800 and 800 to 1000 is how you need to split it and have a look into it and there is a very important point that is to be understood by now and that is nothing but what is that colon after that n comma what is that colon after the tp comma it is called a step what is that step very simple step is that just an improvement or improvisation from one step to another if my input is x is y when i step it it is going to be 2 if i have the x as 2 the step down is going to be 3 that's it it's going to be just step and you can see the output there on the screen x is 1 2 3 when i step it up by 1 i get 4 that's it this is the way step is going to be useful for us and we will use it sometime later in the code and you will understand it much more in a better way once you see that now here is where we are getting step assigned with 4 and we are appending it please follow it carefully for the test and the training we are appending it properly with the step and this step is nothing but as i told you 1 2 when you get it stepped it becomes 3 that's it just remember it that way it's an elevation that's it now the next set is the next content that you need to understand is very simple and straight forward yet important whatever we are having the data right now is a sinusoidal representation of the time series and it is not in the format that we can really access it rightly with so we need to convert it into the matrix format and that's what we are going to use we are going to convert the training data set and the testing data set all in the matrix format and it's very easy and you can do it through convert to matrix with train and step as options that's it we have passed them as arguments and we get the complete matrix created now what is the next step as you know every time we keep reshaping we keep preprocessing and that's exactly what we are going to do and rnn model is definitely requiring three dimensional input data and that's what we are going to reshape it up with now we are reshaping reshaping it and we are getting the output displayed as well if you want you can run it through when you are free and you can see that particular column giving you the output as you want now comes the core part we need the very simple rnn model to be built now what is the steps model equal to sequential this is the first step that we do and if you see that very clearly simple rnn is called with units i mean filters as 32 the input shape is one comma step and relu activation is followed 
and the next step is nothing but I have eight dense layers followed by one dense layer in the final stage and the previous dense layer is supported by relay activation and the last is mean squared loss and previous time we used to use cross entropy and related stuff and this time we are trying with mean squared error. Optimizer is RMS Pro. We have used the Adam optimizer in the previous cases. In this case, we are using RMS Pro. There are a lot of differences and I have conveyed this in my previous sessions. What is the difference between the Adam optimizer, RMS Pro optimizers and you need to go through it if you want more clarity and understanding. Now, we have got it clearly summarized here for you to understand what are all the layer types, what is the output shape, how many parameters are there and that's displayed. Now, what is the next step? Come on, we will have to fit it up. So let's fit the model and then we can go for training predict, we can go for testing predict and in the fitting you need to go ahead to the epochs properly mentioned and you can see that it's all run and 100 epochs is what we have tried with and we got the output. As we have completed the code, now the time has come for us to understand what exactly is the loss, I mean the result. We've got 0.32 which is displayed as the loss and this could be tremendously improved in terms of performance when you go with better models in RNN like LSTM. This is just a simple RNN and that's the reason I told you in the beginning that might not be really feasible for complex applications and I leave it up to you to really select which one would be suitable for you. But in my opinion, this is simple RNN, you can use it for simple purposes. Thank you very much for following my channel and the content. In case you have any questions, suggestions, please go ahead and type it in the comment section. And if you like the content, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.